Hey everyone. So for the last year, I've been kicking around this idea of building a radio controlled hypercar, something that was a, a pure engineering exercise built to out accelerate and out corner anything out there. A true monster of a radio control car. Like many of you, I've always dreamed of designing and building a, a full size race car from the ground up. And someday I want to build that real car. Uh, but for now, I'm going to start with a more budget friendly uh, learning experience of designing a radio control car. I've always loved hand-built, unlimited-class race cars, you know, cars that are meant for the sole purpose of going around the track as fast as possible. You know, the hill climb cars, you know, things like Pikes Peak, where there's these unlimited classes with massive downforce and unbelievable amounts of horsepower and really no rules other than safety to keep you from designing the ultimate car. Uh, you know, another category I've always really admired is the Formula SAE, which is a student-designed race car. They've really come uh, leaps and bounds over the last decade. And the amount of aerodynamics and manufacturing that they put into these cars is just unbelievable. And I really am inspired by some of the cool solutions they've come up with, especially from an aerodynamic standpoint, even at very low speeds. Um, and then the other class of cars that I've really been fascinated with is the time trial uh, type cars. They, they've come a long ways as well. Uh, here in the United States, we have NASA time trials, and some of the unlimited classes there have really gotten crazy with these giant front splitters, infinity wings, aero built everywhere on the car. The name of the game really is all about lightweight, giant wings, and excessive power. So to study up on RC cars, I started looking at all of the modern uh, off-the-shelf RC cars that are available today, and they really have come a long ways in the last couple of decades. Now, the more I studied these off-the-shelf RC cars, the more apparent their design constraints became. You know, RC car manufacturers have to keep their cars simple enough that the average consumer can work on and actually maintain the car. RC cars have to be overbuilt to withstand being crashed, jumped, and abused in just horrible ways. RC car manufacturers don't have an unlimited budget, so most RC cars are the same chassis and standardized parts so with some tweaks here and there and a different body slapped on top. You know, RC cars have to be affordable and easy to manufacture at scale, which means they utilize injection molding and maybe some water jet cut flat carbon fiber panels. Uh, they utilize standardized hardware, electronics, motors, servos, and ESCs. So really, RC car manufacturers' requirements are much closer to that of an F-150 pickup uh, than a Formula One race car. So if we went ahead and just threw all those constraints out, what could we do? Off the top of my head, I know we could do several cool things. Uh, first of all, definitely a full monocoque chassis. I'm not worried about having to be able to injection mold the chassis itself. I'm gonna probably use 3D printing, potentially carbon fiber molded composites in the future. Advanced electronics and controls that would have a lot of sensors and additional wiring that you wouldn't be able to use in a consumer grade radio control car. Obviously, you have to have aerodynamics galore and design the entire car with the intention of having that level of high downforce on the chassis. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. And since I'm terrible at keeping my focus on these types of projects, I really need to rein myself in and start small and work up from there. Now, at this point, I don't know if half the things will work at the RC scale and speeds. Many of the things I've never done before, so there'll be a steep learning curve. Uh, luckily, uh, no one will die if I mess this up. So I think it makes sense to start with the packaging of the car since this drives a lot of the design. The first requirement is that the packaging has to allow at least enough space to be able to assemble the car. It may require specialized tools to do so and you know, it may be very hard to do, but it still has to be able to be built. You laugh, but this is something that's bit me before in the past. We know we want the car to accelerate and handle like no other radio control car. You know, I don't have any hard metrics at this point, but obviously this means we need to package the components in a way that allows for the best aerodynamics and chassis dynamics. The package has to allow for as light of weight design as possible. And I also want to make sure that the packaging allows us to have more advanced electronics controls and sensors that it will be running throughout the car. You know, I looked at a lot of existing radio control drivetrains and components like batteries and ESCs. I actually have a couple spreadsheets full of all the dimensions of various parts and their weights. 
I'm not going to try to integrate all of these components for the first attempt. I'm going to try to use as much as I can for off the shelf ESCs and batteries and things like that and later design possibly my own. Uh, with a spreadsheet in hand, I started some rough sketches in CAD to have some visual uh, scale of the sizes of the components. Um, I could quickly tell kind of roughly what size battery was going to fit into something like a one-tenth scale car. And I could look at the various ESCs and motors and gearboxes and kind of lay them out in different ways so that I could see how they would work. It was at this point that I realized that the packaging of a gearbox a pair of differentials, some drive shafts. Uh, th this was going to be a real nightmare and really drove the design towards some poor aerodynamics and chassis dynamics. And components like the battery and the motor were in less than ideal locations. At about the same time, I started heavily reading about various Formula SAE teams, uh, particularly the Formula Electric teams. And the hot ticket in these competition cars is individual hub motors because they allow for really cool and advanced traction control and torque vectoring across all four wheels can really enhance the low speed performance. Most of these cars do have a small gearbox inside each wheel hub, typically a planetary type gearbox, which I briefly tried to design one of. And honestly, the weight savings just isn't enough. At the RC car scales, it's really just better to throw in a bigger direct drive motor with more torque. I'm not really limited from a top speed or torque standpoint. I'm all, I've already used these motors in my streamliner and I know that well up to you know 60 mile an hour, I can spin the tire. So that should not be an issue. The first draft of the RC Hypercar's drivetrain looks something like this. Initially, we'll have two rear hub motors with you know, obviously traction control and torque vectoring uh, because we won't have a differential uh, with an additional two front motors at uh, some point in the future. I wanna just try to get this working with two motors initially and then see what I'm gonna do from there with the front motors. This design eliminates the gearbox, the differentials, the drive shafts, and a lot of other components, uh, which take up a lot of space in the chassis, as I've already mentioned. This also allows for a much much larger underfloor diffuser than is possible with an off-the-shelf RC car. And the additional unsprung weight on the wheels is not ideal, but I think the benefits from the additional aero as well as the weight distribution far outweigh this. You know, and as I've mentioned before, these are the same motors that I'm using in my streamliner, just two of them. Uh, I selected a lower KV since uh, I, I don't need a top speed over 150 mile an hour. I know these motors are overbuilt from a bearings perspective and I haven't been able to bend one yet. So I think that's gonna be great for this particular application. For chassis dynamics, uh, I know I want the weight to be as low as possible in the chassis and as close to the center of chassis as possible. Um, this just helps the car turn faster as well as uh, lowers the center of gravity of the car so it's gonna handle better. So the heaviest component is going to be the 3S, 3000 milliamp hour uh, LiPo battery. So it's placed uh, directly in the middle of the chassis and as low as possible. The next heaviest components are going to be the two ESCs. So I have a pair of 60 amp uh, censored ESCs, which weigh I think about 40 grams each, and they're gonna be on either side of the battery. I placed the microcontroller and the sensors, which aren't particularly heavy on top of the battery itself. Um, this keeps the wires short because since it's in the middle of the chassis, uh, it keeps it away from a lot of the EMF. And it also allows more space for the suspension, which I was running out of. And it makes the electronics easy to access so that I can you know, plug them in readily and flash updates. So now that I've kind of got the, the major components, what about the uh, overall you know, width, length, and wheelbase of the car? Well, I looked at a lot of existing radio control car dimensions. I decided rather quickly, even though an eighth scale radio control car would be better from an aerodynamic standpoint and from a packaging standpoint easier, uh, given the size of my 3D printer, uh, a one tenth scale or so car seemed best. Uh, so I started off with the classic uh, Tamiya TTO2 dimensions and tweaked from there. I went ahead and partially designed the front and rear suspension, so I had a rough box around their overall size. Unfortunately, fitting the shocks and the steering proved to be problematic within the wheelbase of the TTO2. So 
the car needed to be longer. Uh, I was apprehensive at first, uh, but I read up on some LMP1 cars and Aston Martin, Valkyrie AMR Pros. These cars had a very different length to width ratio, which helps to generate downforce with their diffusers. I went ahead and copied this ratio and I ultimately ended up with a wheelbase of roughly 225 millimeters wide and 320 millimeters long. The body itself will roughly be 230, 235 millimeters wide and 500 millimeters long. You can see the components laid out here with a rough silhouette for the monocoque that will contain everything. Obviously I have the suspension showing and I'm going to go in depth uh, on the front and rear suspension for this car in a future video as it's quite a bit more advanced than the typical radio control car suspension. So as I've mentioned before, this is my first ground up car design and it's definitely not been a linear process. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to have a logical order to my videos, but just know that there's actually a lot of back and forth going on and that you may see changes with components that had already been designed. I'm also really excited to have the full CAD model for an RC car that I have control over. Uh, it makes a lot of my other project ideas like active suspensions a lot easier because I don't have to deal with the constraints of an off-the-shelf car. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions. Uh, obviously, not everything is fully designed yet, so we're still in the early phases. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.